Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Strategenius Member School Spotlight featuring Faith School in Southborough, Massachusetts. I'm Nancy Nanka Bruce, and I'm here with my colleague, Ara Brown, who is our senior search consultant. And shortly, we'll pass this over to Faye to lead the spotlight. Okay. At Strategenius, we partner with over 100 independent schools from coast to coast that are all committed to equity and belonging, both in their hiring practices and throughout their communities. Um, each school is unique, and today we invite you to learn more about Faye, a kindergarten through ninth grade school not far from Boston. Um, Faye also has the distinction of being the oldest junior boarding school in the U.S., and we're looking forward to hearing more about that. Um, understandably, it can be hard to get to know a school uh, without visiting and spending some time on campus. So we do these spotlights to try and give an extra layer of insight into our school communities. We are excited today to hear from Faye um, and learning about what makes them unique. So without further ado, I will turn this over to school. Great. Well, thank you so much, Nancy and Ara. Uh, welcome, and thank you very much for taking some time to learn more about Faye School. My name is Judy O'Brien, and I'm the Assistant Head of School for the Educational Program. I'm Jill Anthony, Director of Equity and Inclusion. We are so glad to have this opportunity to welcome you virtually and introduce you to our program and community. And later in the presentation, you'll be hearing from some of our colleagues who will speak about different aspects of life at Fay. They include Katie Nuffel, who's the head of our primary school, Caitlin Cronin, who's the head of our lower school, uh, Jake Sumner, head of upper school, Rob Feingold, our director of athletics, and Trey Duggar, instrumental music teacher. We'd like to kick off our info session with a brief overview of our school and our mission. Um, mission drives everything that we do. I think that's one of the things that I love most about Faye is that our mission is central, not only to the, the bigger picture of Faye, but daily life. It's really integral to everything that we do. Um, we were founded in 1866 and we're the first junior boarding school in the United States. Our program offers a, a nice balance between tradition, um, and innovation. And our curriculum, I think, really beautifully blends the best of longstanding traditions, such as public speaking. Um, we have a robust program that helps students find their voice, both in formal ways through, you know, at the podium doing public speaking, but in other ways, expressing themselves in the community. Another aspect of our program that is distinctive is our emphasis on effort. With innovative, approach, with innovative approaches to teaching and learning. Um, we issue effort grades for our students, which is really a, a way to give them a, a benchmark, a touch point around how they're doing, not only in outcome, but also in the effort that they're putting into their studies. Faye's mission is to nurture each child's potential through a broad, balanced, and challenging program that establishes the foundation for a meaningful life, we take that charge very seriously. So while our program emphasizes foundational academic skills, we're also focusing on fostering creative problem solving, critical thinking, and a mindset that will empower our students to make a positive difference in the world. Some details about our school. We have about 475 students in kindergarten through grade nine. We're organized in those three divisions I mentioned earlier. Primary school is composed of kindergarten through grade two, our lower schools grades three through six, and then upper school is seven through nine. Our residential boarding program begins in grade seven and runs through grade nine. Uh, we have day students in kindergarten through grade nine, and we um, welcome about 150 boarding students to our school um, each year. Our students this year come from over 50 Massachusetts towns, and our borders come from 11, United, uh, 11 states in the U.S. and more than 20 countries. 
which provides a really unique community and authentic multicultural experience for all of our students, both inside and outside of the classroom. So you can imagine sitting in a class where the topic of some global topic comes up, um, such as the Vietnam War, which we were studying recently in one of our history classes, and then a, you know, a student really has a, a different perspective just on their own background um, and whatever the, the topic might be, it, leads, it lends itself to really rich conversation and, and uh, organic um, multicultural perspectives. One of Faye's most noteworthy distinctions is our authentically multicultural school community with students coming from so many different countries and states and towns. The work of equity and inclusion at Faye is not theoretical or abstract. It is grounded very much in the day-to-day -day interactions of individuals who come from a multitude of different backgrounds. So in this context, we focus on nurturing the development of kind, thoughtful people who demonstrate integrity and moral courage. And this work is really closely connected with one of Faye's signature programs, what we call Vox Inventum, or Find Your Boy, Finding Your Voice, a school-wide program that fosters public speaking and presentation skills, nurtures self-advocacy, and emphasizes effort, civility, and kindness. Vox Inventum is infused into classes across grades and disciplines, and it's woven into the fabric of daily life at Fay. Through this program, students learn how to identify and pursue their interests and passions with confidence and determination and share who they are with the community. I'm certainly learning so much from all of the diverse stories that our students and adults show up with each day. Fay students practice leadership, whether they're serving as captains of sports team, leading a morning meeting or actively engaging in a conversation about identity in our community connections discussion group. Through Vox Inventum, our students even practice little things that make a big difference in a community like holding the door open for a friend or looking people in the eyes as you offer a confident handshake. Another of our signature programs is our creativity and design. Um, program creativity and design classes are part of every student's regular schedule and that runs kindergarten through grade nine. Uh, in these classes, our students learn the design thinking process, which focuses on identifying and understanding a problem, generating and testing solutions, soliciting feedback, and then making revisions. It's a constant cycle of improvement. Uh, many of our classes take place in our beautiful new Center for Creativity and Design, which is a 7,000 square foot space with rooms for designing and making. Uh, the skills involved in thinking like a designer complement uh, the enduring skills the enduring skills that are part of phase traditional curriculum. This is a great example of what I mentioned earlier of that sort of nice balance between innovation and um, tradition. So students learn to collaborate with others, think creatively um, as they generate solutions to problems and they face challenges. Um, and they do this with ingenuity and resilience. When we talk to alumni, past parents, secondary school admissions officers, they all share really similar feedback about FACE students. They are well-prepared, well-rounded students who are confident public speakers, creative problem solvers. They are self-advocates who are actively involved in their communities. They are global-minded, kind and curious and enthusiastic. So at this point, we are pleased to hand things off to our division heads who will each share a little information about the program in their divisions, followed by a brief overview of coaching and what it's like living on campus. My name is Katie Nepal, and I'm the head of primary school and the director of the Early Learning Center here at Fay School. Primary and ELC, which we call the Early Learning Center, is housed in a beautiful, spacious building. We have two homerooms per grade level and two lead teachers as well as an assistant teacher. We also have a variety of specialist teachers who have their expertise in things like art, library, world languages, which include Spanish and French, PE, and music. 
as well as some wellness teachers and a reading specialist and a speech and language pathologist on staff. Our building is beautiful and light-filled classrooms and hallways. We also have a almost brand new primary playground, um, which connects right to our building, a multi-purpose room where children have PE, as well as we meet there as a community every Thursday morning. The primary commons is a beautiful space where we all enjoy family style lunch every day. So that means that children eat in multi-age groupings at round tables and try new foods and learn, um, you know, how to clear their plates and clean up after themselves. Because we are small, we collaborate all the time. Our homerooms are interconnected physically and our curriculums are very aligned with each other. Teachers work really closely to plan um, almost every day together and stay in sync. I just know that when teachers come to work here, they really get to experience the warmth and the welcoming group of faculty that we have. And we're really proud that we know each other so well and we know our students really well. Hi. My name's Caitlin Cronin. I'm the head of the lower school. I'm in my third year at Bay and have found my role here to be incredibly fun and rewarding. I like to think of the lower school, which encompasses grades three through six, as the bridge from childhood to adolescence. We build upon the work of the primary division, asking students to think more in shades of gray, manage more complex emotions, and collaborate on innovative and intricate projects more often with their fellow students. During their time in lower school, students develop increasing independence. They work with teachers to learn and track assignments, report their own progress, and develop important skills of research, collaboration, and analysis. Courses in digital literacy and principles of design are a regular and very popular part of our program. And throughout, students are asked to think more widely and deeply in science, literacy, and math courses. In addition to our excellent academics, we have high character aspirations for our students and really try and have a wide and encompassing social emotional learning curriculum. Students take turns helping each other out through mentorship roles, taking pride in our campus by waiting tables in the dining room, or setting our morning meeting agenda with their presence on our leadership team. In addition to that, we have a great faculty culture here in the lower school at Fay. Our teachers love to handle all sorts of different student issues from the really small to the larger, more complex ones. And we have a wide range of teachers with experience in middle school teaching or early elementary school teaching. It's a really fun place to work and engaging. We have team meetings every rotation in which we really try and forge ahead and really trying to see how we can make things better every single day. Our day in the upper school is one that's dynamic, fun, collaborative, and focused on community. We begin our day at 7.50 with either advisory or morning meeting. Starting each day in community is central to who we are at Fay and how we operate in the upper school. Our growing and robust advisory curriculum focuses on, on various student skill development and the school's core values while our morning meeting takes various formats to highlight different parts of our community each week. Our class day runs until just about 2.20 in the afternoon, where students and faculty then part take part in clubs, extra help periods, and what we call moose group time. After that, it's off to sports. As a junior boarding school, we are a vibrant community during the school day, at night, and on the weekends. Our faculty live in the dorms, on campus, are involved in student growth and development with both academic skills and the life skill development that comes from living and working at a boarding school. Fay is a community focused on student growth, but also on the growth of its educators and the strong community that our faculty have with each other. Hi, my name is Rob Feingold and I'm the Director of Athletics and PE at Fay School. Athletics is a huge part of Fay's community and of our program. Everyone participates in the program from grades K through nine. Our kindergarten through fourth grade students take PE as part of their athletic requirements, and that program meets during the academic day about three to four times per week. 
In fifth through ninth grade, students no longer have PE during the academic day, but they take part in our after school sports program, which runs Monday to Friday, right after classes from around 3 to 4.30 p.m. A couple of things that differentiate our program are that everyone plays. We really take pride in the fact that we don't have any cuts for any of our students so that everyone can take part in the program and be part of a team. We feel really strongly that being on a team and being ball involved in athletics is a key component to any child's educational experience. The other piece that's that's really important to us is that we fully subscribe to the teacher coach model. We believe that educators are amazing coaches and we focus on having all of our teachers coach athletics throughout the year. And we really feel that athletics is an extension of the classroom and the fact that we hire capable and experienced teacher coaches makes that so much easier to accomplish. It really helps for our students to be involved in athletics uh, every term, three seasons, and we're really proud that every student at Faye is a multi-sport athlete. Like I said, athletics is a huge part of our community, and so we have lots of fun community events such as Friday Night Lights and various tournaments. Really great opportunities for all students, K through nine, parents, alumni, faculty and staff to come out, support the team, support the kids in their competition. We have fun things like food trucks and, and food and, and different uh, events going on, and it really brings the community together. Again, the athletic program at Faye is really an inclusive environment where everyone participates. We want every student to feel like they're an athlete at Faye and build the confidence and all those life skills that are so important to our athletic program. Hello, my name is Trey Duggar, and I am a music teacher here at Fay School. Part of my responsibilities in teaching music include teaching eight different classes, uh, grades five through nine. In addition to that, I also coach basketball in the winter season, and I coach the spring musical, which is a big production every year in the spring. Part of being a dorm parent includes living with my family of five. I have two daughters who are in primary school and a son who graduated from Fay and my wife who works here as Fay. Um, part of my job includes watching and living and mentoring 24 boys um, every single year. It's a lot of fun, it's busy, sometimes it's chaotic, but it's really relaxing to have a family, uh, a large family here on campus that includes my family and the students here at Fay School. One of the benefits of living here on campus is being able to walk to school with my family, talk about the day, um, talk about what we have going on, celebrating games, musicals, performances. Uh, and my girls get a lot of fun um, coming to my rehearsals or coming to my sporting events as a family. While on duty, um, I have to work with the boys once to twice a week during the week where I'm hanging out with them pretty much all afternoon from 4.30 until 10.30. So during that time, I'm hanging out in the dorms with them, while they're coming back from sports, getting ready for dinner, having study hall, having some downtime, sometimes there's dorm cleaning, celebrating birthdays, watching movies, and of course, bedtime. Um, during this time, students are allowed to be on their tech, which means they can hang out with their friends, using their phones, using their computers, but there are points in the evening where they do put their tech away, uh, where we do have meetings or other programmatic events, which is used to help build community in the dorm. Weekends here at Fay are a lot of fun. Starting on Friday all the way to Sunday, students can sign up for different weekend activities, which may include open spaces like the gym, the library, the lounge, where there's a, a video game system, so it's very popular, um, or even just the dorms. And these students get to hang out and relax with their friends and not worry about a schedule. Um, during these open spaces, there is always an adult presence to make sure that they are safe and abiding by our school community rules. Um, some of the weekend trips include going off campus to the mall, to Target, uh, to play mini golf, to go to a movie, to go to Newbury Street and go shopping, uh, to go see a sporting event. It's a lot of fun. So, hi, I'm Jill. I also live on campus. I have five eighth and ninth grade girls from four different countries who live above me, and they are pretty great. 
Um, I will add to what Trey mentioned that for faculty who do not live on campus, upper school faculty do have weekend duties, but not primary or lower or staff. Um, so in my role as director of equity and inclusion, I work with pretty much every group of people on campus, students, parents, faculty, staff, board members, everyone. Equity and inclusion is very much embedded into what we do here. Given the nature of this particular community, we can't teach DEI related topics today and geometry tomorrow. It's part of what we do. We can learn about the geometry in the stained glass windows in a mosque in the town where one of our students is from. The work is embedded in the day to day. So with students, I help plan programming with division heads as well as our director of residential life. Every Thursday night in the upper school, we have student-led discussion groups such as Community Connections, a Students of Color Affinity Group. And those students also work with our lower school students in monthly breakfasts, which we also began in primary this year. And then we have Q&A, which is an affinity space for students who identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community. Recently at Community Connections, we talked about race and sports. And at the meeting before that, we talked about body image and social media. There are so many kids who are having these kinds of conversations for the first time, and I'm so happy to provide a space where they can do that. And all of these meetings are open to faculty as well, but we do have faculty and staff specific affinity spaces, which for us are a bit more casual. We meet over dinner and enjoy the company without any sort of curriculum. I also work with faculty and staff on professional development whether it is bringing in speakers for our de dedicated PD days, leading workshops throughout the year with specific offices or departments, or sharing recommendations for off-campus programming or workshops for which there is funding available. I am also here as a resource whenever anyone wants to step by. Faculty and staff also have the opportunity to be on an equity and inclusion committee whose goal has been really this year to advance the work of phased equity and inclusion strategic plan there are faculty and staff from every division involved, and this year we've done a lot of systems work, thinking about the language and processes of policies, thinking about access, physical, financial, academic, and really digging into what's here, who we are, and growing. It's been an exciting process. So with all of these things, the biggest part of my job is really just to help create spaces where students and adults feel like they belong and help community members feel ownership of their space and their work and I think all of these programs are helping to do that. Yeah, and as Jill said, you know, the, the biggest focus for us is cultivating a sense of belonging in our community. And so working at FAE means joining a community of students, families, faculty, staff, administrators, from diverse backgrounds, perspectives, and life experiences who truly enjoy uh, working and, and learning together, and in some cases, living on campus together. Um, as an independent day in boarding school with students from kindergarten through grade nine and an early learning center with children as young as 2.9 years, Faye offers many opportunities to grow professionally and personally as teachers, coaches, mentors, leaders, and contributors to our community. So we're excited to hear from you. We seek candidates who are excited about um, and, and uh, being involved in an authentically diverse school community. Um, one thing I love about Faye is there's a really high standard of professionalism that's maintained through a very supportive program of ongoing supervision, evaluation, and the professional development that Jill mentioned, um, which is robust. We encourage all employees, faculty, staff, administrators, um, our residential life staff as well to grow in uh, accordance with their own professional goals. Um, through workshops, conferences, training, further education. Um, it's just a great place to work. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Judy, for that fantastic presentation. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity to work at a school that would receive some face students and they've always been a cut above. There's no question about that at all, whether it came to their um, academic ability, their ability to build community, uh, their ability to to bring kids in and just have um, having a strong sense of self. It, it is clear that it is because of the great foundation uh, that you have put into place at the school. So I loved hearing all the different components of the program. One of them around how you intentionally 
build community with your students, your focus on character development, starting all the way down with the youngest students, moving throughout uh, the signature programs that you have. I I'm curious, I would love for you to speak a little bit about how, how the adults build community uh, within the institution, especially since there are some individuals who live on campus and others um, who commute to campus each day for work. Yeah, I can start and Jill, please jump in. So it really begins with our new faculty um, program. So the cohort of new faculty start, you know, they have the campus to themselves for a couple of days at the start of the school year. And that's as much about providing some just in time information that people need to get started as it is about forming that cohort, really a sense of community. And then we meet monthly um, as a, a new faculty group. And um, it's just a time to both answer questions, you know, talk about things large and small, um, but really get to know each other. You know, I think the that sense of belonging comes from, you know, creating a space where people can show up authentically and be who they are um, and contribute in ways that feel meaningful both to Faye, but also um, to them. So that's one way. Um, Another, you know, I think about our professional development, Jill spoke about this a little bit in our some of our dedicated professional development days, but we also have a lot of opportunities for folks to learn together, um, both on campus or, you know, attending workshops or conferences. We've now we have so many options for online uh, for professional development as well, but we really do find our faculty kind of lean in to, um, to learning, especially learning together. I think, you know, at the, the, shortest, um, you know, through line, the, the through line here is people really like being with one another. <laughs> they, the faculty like to be together. They always want more collaborative working time. And I think that's a, you know, a real high quality, um, high quality challenge for us. I will add that when I first started at Fay, I moved onto campus in the middle of the summer when campus was very quiet. And I, this was my first experience at a boarding school. So I, needed, I had a lot of questions. <laughs> um, I needed some handholding and everyone that lives on campus was so welcoming to me, whether it was just answering all of those questions when I saw them while they got their mail on the weekends um, or inviting me over for an outdoor barbecue on the lawn in between a bunch of campus residences. Um, it was really nice to be welcomed into the campus community in that way. Um, and it was a really nice start to my journey at Faye. Um, so in that sense, I got to meet a lot of people just in the neighborhood. Um, and as I got used to Southboro, um, but everyone again has been so easy to be, on campus with and to collaborate with and to create ideas for weekend activities with. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It sounds like there is a lot going on on campus <laughs> throughout the academic year, which is which is exciting. Um, I would love to hear maybe a little bit about a tradition that you hold dear um, at the school, something that you just can't wait for. Uh, year in and, and year out that takes place. Yeah, I, I actually started my teaching career at Faye uh, quite a while ago and taught history at Faye for three years in our upper school and then came back to Faye this year in a new role. Um, but in that time, I think that, you know, what really pulled me back was the community. And one of those traditions that I love is it's called Founders Day. And so for us, our colors are red and white and all of our students, K through nine, are they're aligned with a color team and we have color officers in our ninth grade. And it's really a fun way to sort of build community and school spirit throughout the year. Um, there's, you know, little competitions that happen. <laughs> some are about effort grades. Some are, um, we'll have grapples around, you know, different content areas and, and just lots of really interesting um, challenges. But then it all culminates in a uh, Founders Day weekend, which is coming up for us in May. And it's just a fun day for us to be outside together, playing some games and just really um, coming together as a community. And it's something that a lot of our um, alumni talk about too, and they fondly remember whether they were on the red team or the white team, um, but at the core, it's it's really about the community. 
So my favorite tradition at Faye of all time is called Taste of Nations. And Taste of Nations is an event that we have every year where families and students come together and over 100 families and students bring, set up tables around our gym and bring food that represents their heritage or their culture and representing students from ELC through ninth grade. So people come in from all over for this event. Um, I always try something new, um, but we have kindergarten students who are just so proud of where they're from and upper school students who are far away from home often get recipes from their families. We provide the ingredients and we open up kitchens all over campus throughout the day for those students to cook in small groups um, and share who they are through food. And this all ends with a big dinner celebration um, where again, students and adults are together with the entire community. Um, really just proud of where they're from and proud of who they are and it's delicious and filling and it is something I look forward to every year. Yeah, thank you with that for that, Judy and Jill. And it sounds like a, a great event, right? Where, where um, individuals have the opportunity to not only come together, but share, as you said, pieces of their of their culture. And I think your intentional design of a school allows for different opportunities to, to do that. You don't find many uh, day boarding schools that run from K through nine, right? It is a, a unique setup. So I wanna talk a little bit about that setup and, and the boarding program. My understanding based on what you shared is that boarding starts at grade seven and goes to grade nine. But if someone doesn't work, excuse me, doesn't teach in that particular age group, can they still live on campus and support the residential program or is it reserved for um, individuals who work with students in grades seven through nine. Yes, we have primary and lower school faculty who live on campus, and we also have staff who live on campus. Um, if people are not living on campus and want to participate in residential life activities, there are certainly aspects and opportunities for them to do so, whether it is coming to dinner, um, helping to supervise study halls or participating in weekend activities. There are always ways to participate, but we certainly have people from all areas of Fay living on campus and participating in residential life. Fantastic. Um, there was a mention of the importance of athletics on campus and that all students participate in athletics. What does that mean for the adults? Are they coaching a sport, even if they may not have a background in coaching? And if so, what type of support do you provide uh, to adults to be able to be um, good, good coaches for the students? Yeah, that's a really important question. So our afternoon program is, um, it's, it's really robust and it's exciting for our students. So we start in grade five with our athletic program um, prior to grade five, it's what you might think of as a more traditional sort of PE um, program for K through four. Um, so in the afternoons, we have over 50 athletic teams. And as you mentioned, there's a variety of coaching um, backgrounds and skill sets. So we have head coaches, lead coaches who have some expertise in the sport. They're the ones taking the lead and whether it's preparing a practice plan or, you know, really figuring out the sort of the discipline of, of whatever sport that is. Um, but then we have faculty who are in assistant coach roles, really the supporting piece because our program is it's about athletics, but it's really about character development. It's about community. Um, we have teams that are um, inter interscholastic as well as um, intramural. You know that there we have a, a program called multi sport, which is very popular among some of our students, and and so they're doing a variety of different sports, but not competing with other schools. So just to give you a little bit of the flavor and the, and the variety of our program, um, we also have an afternoon program for students in our primary and early years of our lower school. So although they're not participating in athletics yet, they can stay at Fay, and there are all kinds of exciting clubs 
and um, things happening after school. So we also have faculty who will do, um, you know, lead some of those programs in in lieu of coaching um, team. So to get to your really, you know, that's the the really exciting part about hiring our faculty is is looking for people who bring you know variety of skill sets. And it's great when we have folks who have that um, expertise, but it's certainly not a barrier. We we have so many faculty who. Um, they enjoy being with students. They enjoy the the community aspect of coaching, and then they've got great support from that head or sort of lead coach and our athletic director and our athletic department too are um, are leading the way too for professional professional development for coaches. Thank you. I will also add that everyone coaches only two out of three seasons. We're on trimesters, um, so you do get a season off. Um, there are teacher coaches who just love coaching and are really familiar with a lot of different sports. Um, so they do coach three seasons, but that is a choice that they made. One thing though I love about our athletic program is we have so many students here who try sports for the first time as a ninth grader and are really interested in trying something different, trying something new that maybe they wouldn't even have the opportunity to play at home where they're from. Um, so with that, with the students being beginners, there's certainly room for adults to be beginners as well. I, I appreciate that and really thinking about that growth mindset, right? That we don't all need to come in as an expert in X field, that there are lots of opportunities to grow as an individual, both the students and, and the adults who are part of the community. So, so with that said, I am curious, uh, what are you, what are you looking for in a teacher, and I'm, I'm going to put an, an, uh, an asterisk next to that. So I would say not just a teacher, but in your colleagues, in a community member, right? When someone wants to be a part of this community and you're sifting through um, hundreds of resumes, what are you looking for in that, in that educator and hopefully in that colleague um, that you're going to uh, share community with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that question. Jill, do you want to start? Or you want me to jump in? You can start. I'm formulating in my head. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, you know, we're we're kind of in that season right now. And so it's top of mind for sure, as it always is. But first and foremost, great community member, you know, someone who really enjoys being in community, um, certainly expertise in whatever they're, you know, if they're teaching faculty, whatever their subject matter is. Um, we're fortunate to have pretty robust and strong pools of applicants who bring that, but it's so much more, you know, it's really hard to, sometimes it's really hard to assess that on paper. So we do a lot of meetings like this on Zoom, uh, have people come on campus, we do a full day of, of an interview, and that's as much for us to get to know the candidate as it is for them to feel what it's like to be at Fay. Um, similarly, we can talk about Fay um, as much, you know, as we, we love to, but it really is a feeling. I hear candidates say that a lot, where they just, they see it in our students, our faculty. Um, so I think, you know, cutting through to what matters the most, it's somebody who is joyful in their work. You know, I often use the expression like a kid magnet, right? Somebody who just loves being with children, who really lights up at the idea of inspiring and knows the best possible way to inspire students at whatever developmental stage and age they're at. That's what I look for. Um, there's lots of things that we can, as a community, we talked about professional development, and there's lots of things that we can do to support people in their their growth and in their learning as teachers and in other facets of the role. But there's something that comes from just the person's innate joy and, and love for um, being with young people. That that's what I look for uh, first and foremost. Yeah. And to add to that, certainly joy was at the top of my list. Um, and I just like, as you mentioned, there are a lot of ways, there are a lot of things going on at Faye and there's a lot of different ways to be involved. I look for candidates who are excited about being involved, who are, who want to go to the events, who are excited to learn about the different cultures represented on campus, to hear all of the stories that are being told around the school. And I think that excitement, that enthusiasm, not only for being here, but to grow here. Um, 
on their own journey in their subject, in equity and inclusion work, in coaching, um, is something that really speaks to me. Thank you. I have one final question. Um, and this is a question that we like to ask uh, of all of our schools. And, and Judy, I think this will be a really interesting question for you. Jill, I want you to answer it as well. But as someone who started in the community, left and then came back, uh, you have an, uh, an interesting perspective on things. So my question to both of you is, what would your past self want to know about the school that you know now? Right, thinking about those individuals who would be considering Faye and wanting to, to move into this space, what is something that's really important uh, for them to know? So again, the question is, what would you want your past self, excuse me, what would your past self want to know about the school that you know now? I love that question. You know, for me, I think, you know, the first, my first time around at, at Fay, I honestly was contemplating whether independent school teaching would be sort of in the long view for me. And I guess the, the conclusion is here I am. <laughs> and it turns out the answer to that was yes. Um, so to your question, or I would say that you know, it's a place where there's a lot of support. And I, in my, now my second time around at Fay, that's something I think about a lot is especially when we, if we have an early, someone who's earlier in their career coming into Fay, think about how do we fuel that enthusiasm for teaching? You know, it feels like a responsibility um, that I take seriously of making sure they're supported. You know, it's hard to be new in, in any point in your career. It's hard to be new in a school, but um, particularly new, new teachers. Teachers, I think to know that Faye is a place where people are going to support you, they're going to see your strengths. Um, I think a lot of teaching comes from not only getting that critical feedback, but really being affirmed in what you're doing well and, you know, the, the fuel, the stamina that it takes to keep going, to iterate, to be creative, you know, in your lesson planning. Um, it, that's what Faye offered me. So I, you know, I, I really do. That's deep. That's that's part of who I am, um, thanks to Faye. So I really do try to, to sort of carry that forward. Thank you, Judy. This is a really interesting question and I'm thinking a lot about it, thinking about even what advice would I give to somebody new coming in or to myself new coming in. Um, and that is really ask every question. Um, sometimes, and this is true for any independent schools, we move fast, we use acronyms for things and we just want to make sure that everyone knows what's happening. Um, but ask every question and really welcome the visitors to your classroom, welcome the advice, welcome the questions back. Um, this is a place where it's really beneficial to be curious about one another, about what's happening, um, whether it is what's happening on the weekend, what is happening at breakfast. Um, but also, what is the story? How is your family doing? Where? Tell me about your home. Um, it's really a place where being curious um, will go a long way with both colleagues and students. Thank you, Jill. Thank you both, Jill, Judy, um, for sharing all of these exciting things about Faye. Uh, and for the candidates who are watching this video right now, if you're interested in learning more information or learning about the opportunities that are available at Faye, we encourage you to reach out to any of the consultants or check out the openings uh, on our website. And if there are specific questions that uh, we may be able to answer on behalf of Faye, or if there are questions that we could get in front of Faye that you are curious about, please um, don't hesitate to reach out. So Judy, Jill, thank you so much for spending time with us today and sharing all of the wonderful things that are happening at Fay. Uh, Nancy, thank you so much for leading uh, today's uh, member school spotlight. And to everyone who is watching, thank you for spending time today to learn more about this fantastic school. And we look forward to being in contact soon. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so much.